to do a YouTube video was a full production. And I remember distinctly, it was $12,000 for one episode. Back then, it wasn't like holding a camera being like, yo, on today's episode, whatever, that kind of thing. It wasn't, we didn't, we didn't have that. I'm cleaning really rich guys, really expensive cars, right? What the hell am I doing? They're like, you sold the Taycan? I was like, yeah, and then where'd you go now? So I didn't even go to gas, like a, like a, a little turn, I went like all the way around, I went straight to diesel. I'm Mike Izzo and welcome back to the j and Body Works podcast, a conversation show where we talk to guests about cars, life, and everything in between. Welcome back to the j and Body Works podcast, a conversation show where we talk to people from all walks of life about A to Z and anything in between. Today we have a really special guest, somebody that I'm very excited to talk to, somebody who's been a supporter of us for a long time. We built quite the relationship. We are almost as detail-oriented detail as he is. I don't think we've quite hit that mark yet. But uh, without further ado, Larry Ammo or Larry Casilla. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad glad to be here. Glad to be in this chair. I'm feeling quite reclined. It's a it's a little too comfy. I'm a tall comfy. guy and I'm like this far underneath you. I see the whole play that you guys are doing here. I like that. I need a little bit of power in this situation, you know? <laughs> you put like the crown on you right here. Yes, sir. That's it. <laughs> this this is a, a random first question, but yeah. how's your back from all the years of detailing? It's pretty sore. It, it's gotten better lately because I'm not detailing as much as I was before, which was just like pounding out four or five cars. But the challenge is really... Um, the bending over, obviously, but when I got the new studio to put a lift in there, it's not like, oh, you put a lift in because it's cool and it's whatever. You put a lift in because I couldn't function at the end of the day. Yeah. So to have that car come up, what people don't understand is when you have a polisher, so let's say it's three and a half pounds, four pounds, okay. and then you have it vibrate. Right. The instant you pull it away from your, your body and then go down, like if you were, if I, we can't do it now with these things here, but I, if I were to pull your hands down, you, you couldn't really do that. But if I said, bring your elbows in to right. your chest, obviously just like, you'd be like much stronger. Mm -hmm. So when that car goes up, that means I can polish here. Get a little tighter. As opposed to like bending down. It's got to be brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. And then you add on top that this knee was redone. Oh, God. And this one is supposed to get redone. So I'm kind of like nursing it because I just don't want to like take the six weeks or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Everything. So yeah, back, back pain is better than it has been in the past. But like if you start going with the machine, it literally shakes this one part of my upper left you know, back and whatever. that should be the next thing besides the uh, the products that we're going to get into. You should start doing like back braces or corsets or something for I people. I actually do exercises for detailing. I believe it. And I, ha I have a whole like like little course thing I did with a guy and I filmed all of it um, for this training, AML Training Academy 300 series, this, this training series that we have for people about being professional and mm -hmm. like how they, you know, branding and all that kind of stuff. But one of the modules is like, hey, like this is uh, this is a big deal. So I actually had the trainer come down. His name is Colin Campbell. He came down and he watched me, you know, you know, for a day or two and he, you know, did whatever like science thing that he did. And he's like, this is like being a wide receiver and then, you know, that kind of, or whatever it was, it was like a lot. He's like, he didn't, I didn't think it would be this physical oh, and detailing cool. with the up and the down and the bending and the machine, the machine is the big deal. So then I tried these, um, vibration gloves. Okay. Ah, they didn't work out. Can't feel shit. Well, you can't, I couldn't, like, I didn't, I, there was no touch. Yeah. So I, I think they were really designed for, like, guys in the jackhammer, like, da, 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 you know, yeah. that kind of thing, where it's like. It's good for a motorcycle, right, too. Like, sometimes you, you don't get really that. need to have fine touch when you're crushing concrete or something. Maybe you do. I don't know. But when you're working on a $2 million car, oh, yeah. like, you kind of need to know what you're, so that didn't work out. But So you were talking a little bit about branding there, and then yeah. the, the, the buzz thing that came to my head was the $2 million car. So. Tell us a little bit about who you are, right. what you do. What is Larry Ammo, Larry Ammo NYC? How right. did that start? So um, my name is Larry Silla. I'm the founder of Ammo NYC. We started in 2011, uh, the, the brand itself. But uh, I started detailing back uh, professionally in 2004, 2005. But I had been doing it on the side like every, you know, you know little side hustle kind of thing in right. high school uh, for years. So I, I don't know where to even start. 20 years plus you wow. know, as a pro and then probably another couple of years as whatever. Make a very long story short, I worked on Wall Street. I hated it. Um, I just didn't like the the culture and the atmosphere and, and, and all that. And you know, people think, hey, you need to. I wanted to have a lot of cars. I thought that I needed to have a lot of cars to be happy. And I don't think you know, as you get older, that's not really the case. Right. Um, and so at th at that time, I said the best way to make a whole lot of money, you know, Wall Street. I went to fancy right. schools and all the things you're supposed to do. And so I worked on the on the mercantile exchange, which is natural gas commodities. So I was able to learn the natural gas commodities. I mean, if you're terrible at it, you're making millions of dollars. If you're average, you're making like a gajillion dollars. And if you're good, which is the guy that I work for, he made a fortune. My job is to reconcile all the money that he made or lost in a, in a day. 
And so it was stressful, but you know, you make a lot of money. And I'm like, this is great. I'm going to go buy a bunch of cars. And then I realized, you know, I'm, I'm shortening, you know, three, four or five years of agony into, into a quick conversation. But I realized, hey, I just wanted to be around cars and work on them and that kind of thing. Um, and so I left, which people thought was completely insane. So cars were your passion? Cars were the passion. And I, I didn't really get to understand. I mean, I was 20 something years old. I didn't really understand that it turned out like cleaning was really um, sort of bringing order to chaos, as weird as that sounds. That makes sense. As you, I feel like in the last like three or four years, as I've, you know, you know, I'm 42, so as I hit 40 and the kids and the whole thing, you know, you start to realize like, what are you, like, what am I really doing? Like, what, what's the, you know, it's always just been go, 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 make as much money as you can and be able to like buy an apartment or a house right. or whatever and save. midlife crisis there. Right. And so when you get to the midlife crisis, you're like, I have the cars that I want. I, you know, I'm financially okay. I'm not like starving. My kids and my wife, everybody's healthy. Like everything's good. Like what, like what am I supposed to be doing? But I had a, you know, sort of a, a flash of, you know, brilliance or whatever when I was 20, like, Hey, maybe I, maybe it's not trading natural gas commodities. That's what you're supposed to do when you come from fancy schools or be a doctor or a lawyer. Right. So to be able, I left and then I was the curator which is a fancy word for like, you know, if you're a garbage man, you're a garbage display, whatever. I, was, I wasn't a curator. I was basically the detailer for a museum. Oh, cool. And this museum would rent out uh, crazy cars, whatever they could, whatever, everything from like old school Mercedes to Corvettes to like Ferrari Dinos, they would rent them out to movies and auctions and photo shoots. It was That's the coolest sick. thing in the world. I got paid like $400 a week or some, what in New York City, like you could barely live right. on any of that stuff back then. Even, I, I can't even imagine what it is today, but... Um, so I left a very high paying job to do that. And people were like, uh, it, you're either crazy or you really want to do this. I really want to do this. And so I started back then. They didn't have YouTube videos. The YouTube didn't exist. Right. And so I would download. What year did you start YouTube? I started on YouTube um, probably 2000, late nine. Was that 10. around the same time you made that switch? No. Before then, I was reading everything I could on forums okay. about detailing, and I started practicing and learning and whatever. And then um, I eventually saved enough money to, to buy uh, a pre-existing car wash, which was a detail facility, which wasn't really like a, what you would think of a mechanical car wash. It was just a, a house with two garages, basically. Yeah. And I took over this business and started working there and, and building up the business. And like everything I had went into that for a couple of years. And then um, right around then, a buddy of mine, Matt Farah, who's a big podcaster, everybody knows him, you know, uh, editor in chief of uh, Road and Track, et cetera. And so him and I have known each other for 35 years. And he got a job or this um, sort of opportunity. He was working with us, I mean, with him and I were partners in our, in our business, in the uh, detailing business. And then he got this opportunity to go on this thing, YouTube. It's isn't it crazy to even say that. Yeah. Like this thing, you, we were like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. So he went on the show. Uh, I can't remember for the life of me what the name of the show was, um, like Drive or something. I can't. It's so long ago. And he went on. And he just killed it. He was great. He was like very personal. Just a natural. Just a total. I mean, absolutely destroyed. Wow. It. And so we were like, oh, this is interesting. And I'm like washing cars. And I'm like, hey, go promote. At that point, the name of the company was New York Motor Club. Kind of fancy. It wasn't as opposed to like. Larry's car wash. Joe's. Yeah, it's like that's <laughs> Joe's a little like pizzeria. Yeah, it's like a little yeah. flat footed. So we had New York Motor Club. We had a great design, and we had some friends that were amazing designers. So branding and the the way it looked and felt and smelt and the whole everything was designed right. So Matt went on Fast Lane Daily. That was the name of the Fast show. Fast Lane Daily. Um, Derek D, his buddy of mine, uh, was the host of it. He brought him on, and Matt just like I don't want to say stole the show, but you could tell like he was good under these lights. The like this, this him out. yeah, this made. And so he did that for a while. We got some notoriety, meaning that New York Motor Club, but he just took off. So long story short, he went to LA to try to go pursue his dream, which totally made sense. And I was still detailing and doing that. Fast forward. Like, Wait a minute. I know. I know, well, what I, <laughs> no, it was all good. And then I wasn't really comfortable. I hated being on camera. I mean, I'm literally on camera. Would not be able to tell now. Yeah, I'm on camera 24 hours a day. I've done two podcasts already today mm -hmm. and a, a, an intro to another video. So... I, uh, I said to Matt, I know this sounds crazy. At this point, he's like three or four years into not being famous, but kind of being famous. And he had like multiple shows on this drive channel, which was new to YouTube. Basically what happened is when YouTube came out, we did, there was videos and, you know, YouTube was all about how to, uh, in the beginning. And, and I, if you want, I can talk to you about how it's changed over the years, yeah, but, please. um, YouTube, how to, uh, and you know, what's the latest Ferrari and all this other stuff. Right. And then the YouTube channel, um, the YouTube uh, corporation itself 
came out and said, hey, we're going to spend like, I can't remember the numbers, like $500 million or some ridiculous amount of money. Right. And we're going to take down television shows. Like we are now the new, this was years ago. And so what they did was they funded the Drive channel. And basically what they wanted to do was have, well, it's culinary, uh, home improvement, right. cars. Sports, or like, whatever. Sports, exactly. Like these major categories. And within those major categories, they would give money to producers to, to produce multiple little shows. Were One they about looking for creators or like people who are already in that producing world? They wanted people already in that producing world. Okay. Matt jumped into it okay. and he was great. And they were like, oh, you can produce this show and that show. And he did, um, I can't remember the names of the shows, but he had like 50 different shows of, uh, Tuned was one of them and about various niche things like late model this and muscle cars and this or whatever it was. Right. And so a couple of years in, I went to him, I was like, listen, this is gonna sound crazy. I was like, I think people wanna watch like detailing. And he's like, dude, you know, put a hand on the shit. I love you. I think you're great. Let's I think kill it's this idea. <laughs> it's a horrible idea. And what I do, I was like, you gotta, you gotta hear me out. He's like, because we're like best friends, I'm gonna put you in touch with a guy named JF, who was the head of the Drive Channel, and now right. is one of my closest friends. Right? Really good dude. And at at that point, I didn't know him, and he said, "Hey, come to the city." And so I went to the city. We were in a Starbucks somewhere randomly in Manhattan, and I said. I got an idea. I think I want to do this how-to series about people washing their cars and like, you know, the therapeutic aspects of that and like how to do it properly. And I remember him, he's like, um, nobody wants to see that, but I do appreciate you coming in here. And I said, whoa, whoa, wait, how about this? I'll produce the first three episodes. Cause I was pitching oh, them wow. as if, you know, they have to pay for this. And I was like, I'll produce the first three episodes. Cost you nothing. Right. It will cost you nothing. And if it works great, if it doesn't throw it away. And so I remember I had no money. Um, I paid and I had no money and the production you would think back then it wasn't like holding a camera being like, yo, on today's episode, what whatever, like yeah. kind of thing. It wasn't, they, we didn't, we didn't have that. And so to do a YouTube video was a full production. And I remember distinctly my first episode, which was with an R8, which is why I have an R8 now. Oh, that meant cool. so much to me at that point because I just driven it in bull run. I, uh, it was $12,000. For one episode. Wow. I mean, which is bananas. It's still bananas. It's crazy. Especially if you were starting off, you were in your 20s and you had no money. No money, right? That's so nuts. that was like mom and dad, like borrowing money from my sister, the whole, like the whole thing just to like make that work. And you're like, okay, basically you're going to watch paint dry. <laughs> and they're like, here's $12,000. Right. And they're like, we believe in you, that whole thing. I practiced my lines and I was like, I was like sick. Like the night, I was like, I can't do this on camera. And I was like, hey guys, on today's <laughs> episode i was like i was horrific but um it was good enough to get the three episodes and what was interesting oh they so they bought it no the three episodes i i did it we went and i they took it and they're like whatever and they threw it up there didn't hear a thing it's just like out of the movies right you didn't hear anything and i'm like oh man this thing <laughs> right 12 grand yeah i just waste 12 grand so then he calls me back and he's like all right so here's the deal I don't know how to explain it. We're still learning this YouTube algorithm thing. We don't know what's going on. And so it happened at that point in time where people people were doing like Matt and Chris Harris, who's now a top gear and all, you know, like, like these guys were just starting out, right? What they would do uh, is they'd grab, at the time it was 599 or 430 or whatever it was back then. They'd grab this car, do burnouts and slide and do all this crazy stuff. But remember when that new car came out, that was awesome for like a hot second. Right. So it wasn't what was evergreen. So when they posted my videos, let's say a Chris Harris video, I'm making this up. These, these are not just for argument's sake. The Chris Harris video would be 100,000 100, views, which is crazy, oh my gosh. And mine would get like 25,000 views, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, Chris Harris was, you know, Matt and all those guys, I, they were great, I was like, hands down, like they're the kings, no problem, I wasn't arguing it. But then they said, we kept looking at yours and they would go 100,000 and then come down like this because the new model of the 599 or the 430, whatever it was, the next one came out. Nobody cares about the one that was right. last week. But mine was uh, how to, I'm making this up, how to take swirls out of black paint, pick one, right. I don't care, whatever it is, right? You do that, it's la it lasts forever, it's evergreen. Right. And so they kept seeing the tick right. go up or steady, and that is what YouTube wanted. They didn't want back then, back then for the record, back then. They didn't want the spike. Spikes. They wanted the. They wanted to build YouTube, so they favored YouTube. Favored my videos of evergreen how-to content, right? Because that new five ninety nine or whatever it would be, you could do your thing. Last on week's it. news, or you could do it on three fifty six. Right, I could. I could do my thing. Oh yeah, I get you. Yeah, I could do it on car. every car. Doesn't right. matter what it, doesn't it is. Matter. It's just an example. Hey, this is just an right. example we're doing on an old Honda Accord. It, it, you can use this on your X, right. whatever it is. But like Joe Schmo in Iowa doesn't have a 599 to do drifts on. He can't be Matt Farah. That's right. But the guy can 
you can try to do whatever it is on any car. It doesn't right. matter. And so they loved it. And then so the algorithm really picked mine up. And ad sales was a big deal. So making ad rev off of it, ad rev was monstrous. <laughs> it was just huge overarching thing because that's how the whole, um, that was the air in the person running the marathon. That was the fuel that right. kept that channel going. So ad rev was, I can't even put a word to it. It was so important at that point. And so if you went back and you looked at my videos, because the video stayed like this, we had a retention rate that was higher than, than the others. I'm not gonna name names because I don't remember what it was, but mine was the highest. So we're sitting in this meeting and I was so excited to be in the room like, oh my God. I was like Chris Harris, and I'm like, yo, what up, Matt, whatever, and Mike Musto, and, and uh, Emil Rensing, and uh, uh, I, I get uh, tons of guys, you're like, oh, my God. Like, you know, selfie, yeah. like, it's really cool, right? And we're sitting in there, and I'm like, I'm part of the channel, but I'm kind of like a guy who, like, paid to get into yeah, the back right, door or right. whatever, so I felt like a little loser, but whatever, and they're doing awards, and the most views or whatever, and it's all internal to try to get us motivated to keep, right. you know, uh, Chris Harris with 5 billion views or whatever it was. And Matt Farrow had the most, you know, da, 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 And the most engagement. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool to be here. Is uh, uh, Drive Clean. I'm like, I was like, what? Wow. I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, and it was kind of a moment. And there wasn't anything, but everyone was like, what? Is that guy still here kind of thing? <laughs> and so my point being was because it was evergreen, people would go back and be like, wait a second. What did he say about the step uh -huh. two? Was it to use the f this or, or that one or the, right. this pad or that pad? So they would go back. So when the they replay would go back, value was there. That's exactly right. And the ad would play again. So mine, even though it was getting uh, a quarter of what, let's say, the big guys were getting, I was generating more cash on a longer, like a, a, a larger slope right. than they were because they were like this and they came down. Mine was a long-term longevity kind right. of thing. So they were like, uh, boom, I got three seasons. That's a long way of saying how wow. I got three seasons. That's crazy. Yeah, and that was the algorithm back then. Obviously, it's changed like drastically. But that think. makes a lot of sense because like, too, whenever I do a, watch a tutorial video, which honestly, I don't understand why anybody pays for college these days because if there's something you want to learn, just go on YouTube because some guy way smarter than the professor at MIT is probably teaching it in a way more solid way. You, so going like, to college is to just like avoid going into the real world for four years yeah. and get like maturing. So I get it, but we're on the same page. If you want to learn, like get in that booth down there and start polishing 100%. or sanding or whatever yeah, it is. Earth by fire. Yeah. But you can, you can. The other thing too is like, I bet the, the amount of time that your videos were up on people's screen besides the watch time, people were probably pausing your videos, going to try it, and then coming back, rewinding, playing it again, and that's really important too. Leaving a comment, asking a question, right. us responding to it, all those little things in the algorithm of YouTube world meant something back then, and we just absolutely skyrocketed. You, you know, I gotta give you a compliment now, um, because this is something that I hear about you all the time. So. My dad didn't think YouTube was shit. I remember then, walking in because I was terrified. I, I, you're going to tell that story. Yeah. It's a great story. Ooh. But um, And then your video came out. It did, I think at this point, it might be at 9 million views or something, something like that, like one that. of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, this thing isn't shit. And then people started calling and coming in and saying, I, I got you from Larry or or I got you from that guy who is like always on camera or I got you from that whatever. That cleaning guy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he was like, I... I kind of get it now, but what was interesting was you always, the thing that people always come and say to me is Larry is accessible. And that's what I think is really cool about what you're doing is I've had people say that, that they'll call you and you'll stay on the phone with them for 10 minutes just to tell them that you can't do it, come to J and B. Yeah. And that's that to me, I think what you were talking about before is you've also been able to build a community around mm -hmm. what you're doing. Like people are like, I see Larry ammo stickers all the time on cars. It's pretty cool. It's a very actually not to be corny it's like emotional i was in north carolina and like somebody drove by with an ammo sticker um and i remember that was like the first time i ever saw it. this is years ago and i rolled down the window and i kept calling like beep 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 and he's looking over at me it was a big uh big black uh, pickup truck and beep 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 and um you know you're waving i'm waving i'm going like like this and the guy's like whatever dude like <laughs> this is like some creepy guy like trying to like smile i'm like no me and i'm going like like this and the guy's like i don't know and he drove off and i never got to really whatever but i was like Dah! i was yeah, like losing my mind that, that, that had huge. spread that way so what did it feel like you see now you are what you are and i want to hear a little bit about that but when you were growing do you remember what it felt like when things started to take off was it anxiety inducing it was in 
a little bit here and there is exciting, but um, because of my nature, which um, is kind of interesting, I think across all detailers, we have like uh, the self-conscious kind of thing, uh, trying to be self-pleasing, you know, self-pleaser, like I, I want to make you help, uh, or not self, um, trying to please other people yeah, rather. Grat gratifying. Gratifying other people is what I meant. That I, I feel like that's innate in detailers or something. I'm trying to talk to a psychologist about that concept and even talk on a, maybe on a podcast, like what's, all the detailers seem to have like this, thing where they're where, where are we trying i don't i don't know i don't know how to put into words yet. i haven't quite thought about it I but i definitely saying. felt that where i'm like i'm i'm trying to be something look how good the car came out like look at look at look it's, look look it's daddy issues for me it's daddy issues. Is it, yeah it could be something else but yeah. it seems to be like a prevalent um consistency amongst detailers and i don't know what the word is because that's an interesting thing to think but about. yeah there's there's something in that genre let's say doctors are this and you know CPAs tend to be more in, in, introverted and nerdy or right. whatever it is. Detailers are something, and I can't put People my finger fit on. into categories. Yeah. So, what made me um, have anxiety, or maybe not anxiety is the right word, uh, is when it started to take off, which is when I got the probably like the second season, in between the second and third season of the Drive Channel. We started to get recognized, and I would walk around, and people, you know, whatever at a show, hey, that Larry. kind of thing, which is cool. And I was like, oh, like this is weird, but awesome. Uh, I started getting emails. When I get emails, I get a gajillion emails. I'm and the sure. thing is, it's not like I have a. Um, uh, what's the difference between I'm making something up that's very basic, wax and sealant or something? Right. Where you're like, oh, cool. Like you have a, a standard thing, and it flies out. This is like, hey, I have a 1967 Corvette split one, blah, blah, blah. And in this particular panel underneath the left or the right or the left blah, 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 right. has a thing. And I tried doing this and I tried doing that and I tried doing this. What do you think? It's not, there's no, did it do? Yes. Here's you know what I mean? Answer. There's like a, so right. I started like panicking because every night I would go home for like two, three hours after work and filling I would just emails. filling out emails because I, yeah. So I liked doing it, but towards the end I started getting crazy because I, I, I hate making a customer or anyone actually, and forget about the customer, just a person unhappy. I want to try to help them with whatever it is they're doing like everybody else. But when you have an inflow like that, that's when the anxiety can happen because you're not, you're not able to do every single person. Right. And so uh, it wasn't only until two and a half years ago, maybe I finally got help and the help and what was funny is that the help that I have now, his name is Jordan. He's been in some videos that you've seen Jordan. Mm -hmm. He's a cool guy. He's a great guy. Um, it wasn't like, I looked for help. Uh, he kept knocking on the door, and I mean literally, uh, and to the point where I have him in my, in my phone back then as like the kid that didn't go away kind of thing. And I started to appreciate that because I have stories of me knocking on doors and being like, I'm not going to go away. Like either teach me or I'm just going to stand here and watch you kind of thing. Um, that's how I got into college, by the way. That's a whole other story. Um, and uh, I just like, all right, I'll give you a shot and the rest is history. And now he like, you know, knows more than me about running the company and all that kind of stuff. So right. he's, he's a success story, but without him is my point. I was spending so much time writing emails and they're not like, yes, no, thanks for watching. They're like really thoughtful emails because yeah. I want to make it that it started stressing me out and, and causing um, home problems. You know, I, I, I'm also a dad. I'm also a husband. You know what I mean? So I had to, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm writing the 7,000th email tonight yeah. to make sure that like, and and as a crazy person, like I want to make sure that that email is just like just right. You know right, what I mean? Like course. it's the syntax, like and the like, way you would detail a car, right? So, you know, when 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 is the it was great, it, and I was like I would never be so like my pet peeve is when you see like someone who's and I'm for the record I'm none of these things not famous or whatever, but you see like a famous person or like a baseball player or like an actor, and they don't stop. Maybe not so much for adults or whatever, but they don't stop and like talk to like a 15 or 18 year old and, and younger and like sign the ball. That is your job. You play baseball, right? You go out there and you play around about it and you get paid zillions of dollars. Like you sign that thing. And if you, if there's 50 kids, then you're standing there for 50 kids. Like, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. So I, that was like my own like little thing. Like if somebody thinks that I can help them with whatever it is in this not important thing, which is detail. It's just not, I'm not a doctor. Right. I'm not like, you know, it's, we're cleaning cars. That's what I thought in the beginning, right? And I was like, then I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to write something that's thoughtful as opposed to being like, yeah, yeah, you put some wax on it, you'll be fine. You know what right. I mean? I really wanted to put, so yeah, to answer your question, that was the only anxiety I had because I didn't, I just couldn't write anymore. That's and so when sense. Jordan came on, Jordan was helping me articulate those things. He's a, uh, he, he actually types like, you know, the people that go like this and yeah. type the whole thing. I'm like- 90 words a second, just- blur, 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chicken, you know, pecking. My, uh, my favorite story kind of along that line is I used to do theater and before we would go out and do our, uh, our last show, um, whoever was like one of the main actors would 
give this speech. It's called the Mickey Mantle speech. And I don't know all the real details. I'm not a sports guy. But the basic idea behind it is there was this game Mickey Mantle was playing, and they had already, the Yankees had already sealed their World Series like bid to go bid. to the yeah. And um, Pop Fly goes up. Mickey Mantle sprints out, jumps, dives over the stands, catches the ball, and like almost just destroys his opportunity to play in the game. And the reporters afterwards were like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? He was like, there's a kid out there who's never been to a game, who loves Mickey Mantle, who came to see me play, and I would die if I found out that I couldn't give him the opportunity to watch Mickey Mantle play his hardest. And it's kind of in that same vein of what you're talking about. I think the reason maybe why you've been able to be so successful besides the fact that you're fantastic at what you do is I think you exude passion. And one of the questions I have, because I've oftentimes gone back and forth with this, is I'm super passionate about cars. Now I work in cars. You can lose a little bit of passion when you start working in something. It's like you might love to cook, but you don't want to be a chef. So how do you fight that? Have you have you experienced burnout? And yes, I have. Back to your first point about Mickey Mantle, by the way. Like I have Mickey Mantle on my wall. My son uh, is number seven oh, in baseball. Um, it's by far my favorite baseball player ever. Uh, it's my dad's favorite baseball player. Um, I, I just can't believe you said that. Anyways, I have an old picture of Mickey Mantle and my dream um, and my son, we're trying to figure it out and we got to save up or whatever, is to get an actual Mickey Mantle card. So I held one in my hand. I'm like, we're, we're going to have this one, one day. day. My son's like, get it. I'm like, um, you're going to not go to college right now. <laughs> college so this, buddy. Yeah, exactly. So um, I can't believe you just said that. I just got to sell a few more bottles yeah, of this. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that. definitely. Um, but my dream is to have a Mickey Mantle, um, actual real Mickey Mantle card. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Because I, I do believe in him. But anyways, um, in terms of the burnout, I wouldn't say so much burnout because I do like what I do. I do physically burned out. Absolutely. But this kind of the first ish time I've been like mentally burned out a little bit is as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize, okay, I love the idea of cleaning everything and cars are also my passion. So I combined cleaning. because I like cleaning my toilets. I like cleaning my sink. I love everything to be, I love bringing order to chaos, but I also love cars. So to combine the two of them was great. But like you said, you, you know, a cook and a chef and the whole thing, you don't want to cook. I, I get that. Where I'm starting to feel a little bit of like tinge is because of the experience that I've had detailing, um, physically detailing people. Uh, I'm not really detailing the cars. I'm uh, I'm the trust guy. They know that when they get there, the car is going to be is going to be in good shape. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I know that I'm not going to burn through the paint. Knock on wood, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's really like a trust thing. Yeah, exactly. If anything goes wrong, it goes to JP. (laughs) Um, But when you get to these cars that are like multiple millions of dollars that I was alluding to before, and the customers are great and the people who own them are great. So no no judgment there. But sometimes I'm like, like like a three or four million dollar car from the factory. It's like, what? Like, do we, are you driving that? Are you doing anything with it? You know what I mean? And so, and I'll, I'll juxtapose that. I, uh, in a, a recent episode, it sounds ridiculous, but a, a gentleman passed away and I got called in like, hey, we got a bunch of cars and we need to get rid of this. You know, we need to get rid of, we're just going to get, you need to sell this one, this one, this one, and we're going to junk this one. I'm like, what are you junking? And I'm looking around the corner. I'm like, what? I was like, that's a Model T. And he's like, yeah, who, who the hell wants what? a Model T, right? And I'm like, mm, just chill, everybody, just wait a <laughs> second. And then like, I'm pulling it off and there's like not... We went back and we refilmed it. But when I did it originally, there was no cameras there. I was just like hooking it. I was like, yeah, I'll come by. Don't worry real about barn fine. Real thing. barn fine. So we, I was like, put it back together. We got to film this kind of thing. But in the when I pulled it off, I remember getting the chills and I'm like, and I, I took my light, you know, I'm going like this with my light and I'm going like, oh, wow, this is like an original 1923 Model T. Decent shape. And I was like, all right, so we need to film this. What's my point? My point is, I bought that car for pennies. Really? Because they were gonna throw it away. They're like, hey, we just, they were, you know, you know, and you're just, when somebody passes away, you're like, I just want pennies on the dollar. I wanna get out of this. I don't wanna right. think about him anymore. Just get rid of all this stuff. And I was like, listen, I am gonna love this car like no other person. They're like, they were kind of like, that's great. Just give me the money. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like one of those kind of deals, but I gave them money. I shot a video on it. And I love the car because when you look at it and you touch it and you feel it and you drive it, it's a part of history. It's, you know, um, uh, there's a book that I'm reading, uh, uh, Automotive Archaeology. And it's like, this is a piece of, it's an artifact. It's a piece of history. And along oh, yeah. the way, it tells all these different stories. So unlike, let's say, I'm using a, a bad example here, like a chalice, right? It's amazing. And it was used by King, blah, 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 blah. And now you go to the museum, and you see it and like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. It drank from that. That's really cool. 
and then you walk on, right? Right. This is the same kind of thing, but it's passed along, and so the stories continue to go, and guess what? I'm the next story in this right. one. So to me, it was so cool. Why did I mention the $2 million car? Is that really gonna be, maybe it will be, and I hope I'm wrong, like it's totally cool, but in my experience of doing umpteen um, values of car, like just right. crazy hyper cars, which are awesome, and I love all of them, and I'm grateful for all the customers, but it's like, they get locked in a museum and they're basically that chalice and right. like nobody develops any stories. You don't really drive them because you want to get them dirty because you know they're clean. And it's like, well, what the hell are we doing? Like, why right. are we like why does it so that's been like the metamorphosis in the last couple of years. So I wouldn't call it burnout. It's been more like, what am I, what are we really doing here? And so I've been trying to focus people more on the therapeutic aspect, which I I, I don't know if people watching this are like, is this guy crazy? Like No, it's there. Yeah, it's like sometimes my car is clean. It's clean, and I just need to like I need to solve a problem, and I call it a shower moment. Um, do the dishes. I'll clean the bathroom, like whatever. I need my the back of my brain. I don't know what it is, a hypothermia, whatever. Something in the back of your brain that's doing its its work. I do that when I'm detailing, and people say, like, "How do you come up with these products?" I'm like, "Well, I'm the difference between me and the big, you know, private equity groups that purchased all these. We can all, we can go for hours into that conversation. These big um, groups." is there's, there's nobody actually doing it, 100%. right? And so I feel like if I, I have to have these knees and everything functioning because I have to do it, otherwise I can't get into that, third, you know, that Zen mode. That flow state. The flow state, exactly, to figure, okay, this isn't working, like why is it? But I'm not like consciously like, mm, come out with a new product, you know what right. I mean? I'm not like forcing it. Right. And I feel like the cleaning does that. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, this is so great, I'm the one guy. And then when I shot these videos, like a gajillion people when they come up to me to, to this day still say like, hey, this almost to the point where I'm like, you feel like I'm exaggerating. Like you've changed my life. One, you know, where people say like, uh, you know, I started a business because you whatever. That's a reasonable change of life. Awesome. I'm so grateful. My wife gets teary eyed because, you know, they see us in the, you know, the supermarket or whatever. And then I get these ones where like, uh, a lot of kids with like autism and yeah. kids that have these issues of focusing or whatever, they'll watch the video and then, uh, you know, we'll be able to do whatever it is they need to do in their regular life because they're cleaning a car and it helps them do, I can't speak to it because I'm not a doctor, but I have all these things and I'm like, now I'm starting to think like, okay, maybe this is more than just, because you go through this process when you're saying, I'm cleaning really rich guys, really expensive cars. Right. What the hell am I doing? Right. After 20 years. In the beginning, it's definitely like, wow. And I'm not trying to be like funny or crude or whatever, but if you're a doctor and you do, um, you know, breast augmentation, whatever, like you've seen a thousand, you yes. know what I mean? So like, it's <laughs> yeah. not like you're gonna be like, wow. It, so I, I appreciate it. I think right. those cars are beautiful and amazing, but I don't, like I, I go back to work, you know what I mean? I still can walk past it without spending three hours right. on it. And so to have that start to be something I'm thinking about as I get older, I'm like, how can I change this into a more therapeutic thing? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so I haven't quite figured all of it out, but when anybody asks me that, that's what I'm struggling with right now. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a really good answer for like where passion meets right. profession. And I think that's what I realized too. When, when I get to hand the keys to a customer at the end of a job well done, mm. it's not looking at the Ferrari 599 that's beautifully polished, that's cool. Um, I didn't really do much in that, mm. but when I get to see that customer's face right. and he says to me, you know, this was my father, my late father's car, or this was the car that I, when I felt like I made it and you guys brought it back to life, I had the worst day of my life. I came here and you guys were able to make things complete 180 turnaround. Mm. So I, it sounds like we have similar threads there. It's like you, you find passion. I, I I'm realizing I find passion in the story or in the connection to the person. Right. And, and it's not just the expense of the car. Right. I feel like I, I'd rather do a Honda that's really dirty, but the guy's living out of it and that's all he's got. Like I am down. Like that is a mission. I will get it done. Hell yeah. Okay. A, a very million, two million, five million dollar car. A great, it's a, it's, uh, it's a, a way to make a living and all that. And they're beautiful. It's just a, at this point doing so many, it, can sometimes be, unless the dude comes in and is like bouncing off the wall and this is like the dream car. I, I, I kind of feel, I need that. You and need so that. your story of the guy, you know, that this is his dream car, his dad's car, and he had a scratch and he comes in here and like, and he comes back and he's in tears, you know. Yeah. That's when it's exciting. So that's real. I think that answers your question, but it's like, definitely. it's definitely not like a yes and no. It's something I'm just still trying to figure out. But yeah. everything is great. I love doing cars. It's just 
sometimes the car that's worth a thousand bucks is like a la the Model T is worth everything to a me. A trillion dollars. Like way more than any car that I own. That Model T right now, for some reason, tickles. I have my kid in the back. We put special seatbelts in. My wife wouldn't let me. Thing know. rolls up. Wooden wheels. Oh, the whole thing. Dude. Yep. It is crazy. And, Do you have the windshield wipers that you yeah, got to go like this? The windshield wiper things. And then I have the... Oh, uh, the Auga. Uh, I, I love that. that. Yeah. I love that. And, so, and it's really hard to drive. So it's almost yeah. like, oh, I want to... Remember that back in the day, like, I want to drive a stick. Everybody stick, 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 stick. And like when... I have so many stick cars now. I'm like, I, I just want to... Give me a PDK, yeah. please. Yeah, the Brooklyn's there over there. I'm like, dude, that's that's what I'm looking for right now. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I like that Bentley. That's my next dream is to get a Bentley but in the Model T it is incredibly complicated to drive this car I mean not like oh yeah it's really hard it's really hard to drive uh -huh. the, the gas meaning the, the fuel is here the spark is over here you have three pedals none of which is a gas pedal right it's like kind of crazy there's a clutch a brake and reverse yeah and like he's like when you get in a panic you got to pull the e-brake and hit the reverse at the same time I'm like dude in a panic you think i'm gonna remember to do <laughs> in those wooden it, wheels yeah, like, it's crazy no airbags ah, no it, nothing it, it's not so it's like off the charts dangerous yeah. but in terms of like excitement 30 miles an hour i call it smiles per hour is like 100%. off the charts compared to the two million dollar car that you know it's whatever and like That's oh 300 look at how miles an hour rich that guy is or whatever and so i i, I think i have a chip on my shoulder because when people see the R8, which is relatively speaking, is not really an expensive supercar right. compared to certainly the cars you have out here, the 964 and the Cayenne that we can talk about that you guys are working on. Mm -hmm. It's, I think now that I've been doing it so long, it, I don't get as much grief, but in the past, it'd be like, oh, you're going to get an R8? And I was like, listen to me, you don't understand. I drove that car cross country, not mine, but somebody else's. And that was like the, hey, if I ever make it where I have enough disposable income, this will show that I've... I've worked hard and I've, yep. and so that cars like that represent so much more than like, look how cool I am. And so the guys I feel like who drive the proverbial whatever car, you know, yellow, red, whatever, and have the doors open and it being crazy, I'm like, you don't be the stereotype. Like there's, yeah. there's more than just like, look how much money I can spend on this 2 million, whatever, $5 million car. Right. It's more like, look what I had to do to build this thing and the stories that I've developed along the way. And that sounds like very uh, hokey pokey and pie in the sky. It's, but real, it's like, though. it's, it's very real to me. And, um, that's just a very long way of answering that question. No, <laughs> it's, it's great. Like we, we have, I get to see some of the coolest cars. I mean, I saw something come up on Instagram the other day. It was a story and basically you would check off all the cars that you've driven. Mm. And there was one guy and he had like every car under the sun, every car under the sun he, he had driven. And, um, I was looking at the list and I was like, it, it's cool. But we had an Austin mini moke in the shop the other day. That was, I haven't smiled backing up a car mm. in the shop like that. Mm. I can't even remember. Right, how. and hopefully the guy who owns it is super excited. So like, I'm down with the guy who owns a Honda Civic who loves it to death and like has all these stories. I'm down with that more than let's say just the guy who walked in, wrote a check for X amount of dollars, and like got the car. To me, at this point, that story and that love between the car, whatever it is, Model T to for I don't care what it is. If he has that, I'm down. And so I, being at the you know in this business for that this long. I, I'm able to pick and choose a little bit more like I'm able to vet out. Is this just a guy who wants to do selfies and come in here? Right. Like, he wants like, the clout. He, he wants to like, he did the car. I'm like, you know, that's great and awesome. I don't want to do that. I'd rather do the the guy who's like, I, I need this clean because my dog puked in the back. I'm like, that's <laughs> right. cool. There's like a purpose there. Putting your gloves on. Yeah. yeah I'm like, let's like, get like, down. Let's get like, in it, baby. Yeah, to put a 50th layer of wax on something that's not driven. After a while, it's like, all right, like you don't, you're here for like a selfie you're not yeah. here for like a real thing so so tell me about the two cars we could talk about either we could talk about both um i want to talk a little bit about the cayenne yeah, this is the yeah. project you're working on yeah. now something that we've got to have our hands on which is mm. was really fun do you feel like you've got a little bit more of that passion that draw for that car yes here's why because you know that i had the tyke on cross turismo mm -hmm. which i thought was really cool beautiful car beautiful car i loved it i wanted to learn more about the electric thing and i knew that the best way to to figure out if the pool is cold is to kind of hop in jump right, right in. jump right in so i jumped right in i still love the car i think it handled great for the weight um but on the other side you know and i'm not like one of those you gotta have to it has to be a four cylinder it's gotta be a you know, i'm not one of those guys <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it got a drive stick i so i can i can straddle both sides and and say like let's look at this subjectively and so it was fast it was comfortable i think if you were driving around town, totally cool. But I have to go, you know where, you can't say who, but I go out to the, the Hamptons all the time. And so that's a haul. 
and it's uh it's about um what's one fifty two and one fifty two so like a little over three three hours yeah. Yeah. Oh, three, three hundred mi- oh, wow. miles and so I'm four hours in the car four hours four hours and so by the time I get there I have to charge while I'm there and then stop halfway and at the end of like doing fifty cars or whatever you know like twenty something cars or whatever is out there. It just took a toll where I'm like, I can't sit here for an hour and three minutes, an hour and seven minutes, depending Twiddling on how many. Your thumbs. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm charge. I'm like, go, go, go. So it just it, it wore me out. Um, I think the car was great. Plus, because the market in you know whenever this airs, we, the market for for EVs is just obviously tanked. And so, um, ironically, one of the I'm not even joking. One of my billionaire customers um, said this thing to me, and I went like, Oh my gosh, that's probably why you're doing. It, when people think that way, like uh, you know, at the high level, that's why you're, you're like, worth wow. a billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. That was I was trying to uh, avoid saying that, but I was like, yeah, yeah, that's why you're worth that much money. Uh-huh. But it it wasn't brilliant, but it, it kind of was to me. He's like, hey, right now with the EV market, it's like they threw a knife up in the air. He's like, do you want to catch the knife here or do you want to catch the knife here? But either way, you got to catch the knife. Which one's gonna hurt more? Mm-hmm. And I was like. Oh wow, that's kind of fascinating. I was like, I'll just catch it here, take the blood, and move on. (laughs) You catch it here, I'm going to lose a finger. So I sold the car on Bring a Trailer, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Bring a Trailer. Sorry, in between the two of them, I can't remember. We're doing so many auctions. I think it was Bring a Trailer, Um, and I got hammered. But it is what it is. The guy who got it is really happy, and I'm I'm happy for him. So why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I went. (laughs) Everybody laughs. They're like, you sold the Taycan. I was like, yeah. And then where'd you go now? So I didn't even go to gas, like like a. a little turn. I went like all the way around. I went straight to diesel. I went like the complete opposite direction. Um, so I was looking um, for this uh, Cayenne diesel forever because I just think diesel is great. It's like, I mean, who? how can you argue with the diesel? But the Cayenne had that diesel gate thing happen. Right. So I was like, well, if I can, f- I, I really like anybody else, like who goes to, um, you know, uh, uh, tag sales or whatever. If I can find something that's like a smoking deal and the whole thing, like oh yeah, find, it's right? titillating. Yeah, so I was like diesel, diesel gate. But what if I can find a diesel gate car? Because nobody wants to touch diesel gate. Like, oh, mm-hmm. that's gross, right? But if you can find one that's certified through Porsche, I was like, I was like, that's the bomb right there. Like, that's the car. Oh yeah, that's what you want. That's the chase. That's the chase. So I kept looking, looking. I called on my buddies who have, you know, obviously, I'm in the industry, so I can call people, blah blah blah, brokers. And he's like, dude, I have one. And no he, way. He's like, I'm just putting it on bringing a trailer in like two weeks. And I was like. Just chill for a second. So I drove out to New Jersey, a blue chip automotive, and I said, "Hey, I, I, I'm gonna, I don't do anything. Let me look at the car." I drove it, and he got it certified through um, the place that he bought it, which was in Arizona. So get some rich dude or whatever had it in Arizona, drove it nothing. 2014, it had uh, 24,000 miles on it, like no, nothing on a diesel. I mean, a diesel if it had 150,000 miles, it's like okay, that the car's been driven, but it's not like that big. Of a right, deal. it's a diesel. And so it had no miles. The interior was chocolate with the deviated stitching. It's I was beautiful. like, right, this is super cool. And then um, I was like, I know, but it's diesel gate, and I'm worried about the blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, check this out. And it was an extra. So I paid like an extra five or $6,000. But you know when it's like the right thing? And yes. I was like, I paid for it. And it's still nothing compared to all the other cars. You're going to pay for it now. You're going to pay for it later. Right. It, the car was still in the 30s. Let me just put it that way. It's like... It's a reasonable, I didn't spend 200 grand on a car. It's a reasonable um, car. So I have a certification that basically says, and a signature underneath the hood wow. from the um, factory thing or whatever it was, that basically says, if anything goes wrong with the car, for I'm just paraphrasing, I basically hand them the keys or they give me a new engine or whatever oh, wow. because of this whole lawsuit with the Porsche diesel yeah. thing. So um, the car is rock solid. And so I bought it. I, I drove it for a little bit and then I just said, let's do it. I bought it. And of course you see all, like five other cars come up on Facebook with all this like Eurowise like off road thing. I'm like, no, like I could have just bought one. And then that would kind of go against my entire thought process of like, I want to be able to build it so I can draw that, bo- you know, make that bond with right. the car. And so I bought what is arguably the cleanest 2014 Cayenne diesel. Um, in the country. In the country. Mint, mint, mint. And then... I took it to you to uh, basically not debadge it. What did we do? Dechrome it. We dechrome. Yeah, uh, Chrome Delete. Chrome so Delete is the it, way. Yeah. I, I can never get that word. Okay. Chrome Delete. Um, and then we sanded it, we polished it, and then we put a matte clear bra. What a bit crazy. People, when I told people that, they were like, what do you mean? What? You detailed the balls out of the car just exactly. to cover it up with the I people. can't yeah. wait till it goes up because the comments are going to be like, you idiot, you yeah. polished it. I'm like, what are you talking about, right? Wait till this video comes out. It's unbelievable. I can't wait. So we got that, and now this is a perfectly clean, like, like 10 of 10 car. And then I had it trailered down to Eurowise, which is like, you know, pretty big um, outfit there. 
um, the guy Mike, he's unbelievable, very engineery, like he's totally involved. In hands all on. Of it. Hands on is not the. I mean, he's like he's doing all of it. He's like well, <laughs> control freak. Yeah, crazy. Great. He's awesome. And so I went down. And I was like, hey, the dream is to make this because I don't really see a lot of diesels. Usually they're like first gen nine five sevens or whatever it is. This right. is a nine five eight. So um, he did this whole custom thing that uh, he has never done before, which is a bumper and a ladder off the roof. Sick, off the top, right? And the idea was. With this roof rack, which he put multiple, usually put like a couple of bars in between a roof rack mm -hmm. to kind of like stiffen it up. Right. He put like way more bars, so it's incredibly stiff. And then he put uh, like steel plates on top of it so oh, you wow. can stand on it. So he could legit like walk around and not Dance be like, feel like you're, exactly. So the idea was because I'm like baseball dad now, that's all I do is baseball. And I coach my son and the whole thing. So it's baseball 24 hours a day. When you go to some baseball play, you know, uh, baseball fields, you know, in the back they have, uh, you know, outfield, and then mm -hmm. they have like the like the green thing that's in the fence, so you can't yep. like see through. So you're like, yeah, you're like, come on, like, Jimmy. One, like, no idea what's going on. Kind of look through, right? <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Like, Dude, this is crazy. Why don't we have a ladder or a chair or whatever? And I was like, wait a second. Bling. Wow. You know what I mean? Like what? I'm like, honey, we need to get a cayenne with a roof rag. And she's like, what? I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to like, yeah. like, hear me out. Yeah, hear that yeah. kind of thing. And so basically what we did was we built a ladder in the back and uh, uh, the roof rack that can hold people. And then we put Pelican cases as seats because they can just stay there. Wow, and now sick. we can see over the thing. It's Hell yeah. And, and the car's been lifted three inches, JRZs. Um, and so- Which is it, crazy. It, it, that's in, uh, the JRZ because I have it on the, the R8 and the 964. I have a relationship with them. I was like, nope. hey, I'm doing this. Like, I think they do it for other people, maybe, but the, it's who puts JRZs on a Cayenne? That's like complete and a diesel Cayenne, like right. that's insane. Never even heard of it. Yeah, right. So they were they made this special setup or whatever, and it's wild. Um, so now the Cayenne has JRZ and the tires, the the, the wheels themselves. We could have gone with a couple of different um, folks that make it, and, you know, for sponsors or whatever. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I, I want this to be a little bit more unique. And they said, what's your favorite wheel? I remember when you guys had the 964 here, mm -hmm. I got someone, uh, this guy named Augmented Wheels up in Canada. Canada. He made the D90s, which were mm -hmm. 16s, but because I think you or whoever put, or Speedsport Tuning put um, the big reds on there. Right. Because of this, we couldn't fit the 16s anymore. I remember and I was that. Like, I yeah. want the 16s. It's like, they don't fit. He's like, why don't we just make it perfect ratio to go to 17. It's like no one's ever done that before. And I was like, that's insane. And it's a lot of work to make it perfectly the same. So I was like, those are my favorite wheels. And he's like, well, why don't we just do that again for the Cayenne? Sick. So he made, but he he changed it so that we didn't get in trouble with it, whatever. So he changed it and then imprinted the ammo logo on it. Wow. And so basically it's an homage to the D90s that I have on the night. So the car is just ridiculously special. Yeah. And then you guys um, uh, were nice enough to have Alex come down and do Alex Alpert do the um you know his thing yeah yeah right um, there underneath so the underneath now has a mural on it so it's completely overdone and ridiculous yeah it's but amazing that's like we were talking yeah. about that's probably where you found your passion yeah right? yeah and so, that's the most exciting stuff yeah and people ask me all the time i'm, I'm building in overlanding honestly you were the one who kind of gave me the inspiration to do this when you came by an overlanding-esque off-road-esque tesla model y oh that's why and people are like why i'm like i don't know it's just i feel it right like i feel i come in my dad's like what, what are you doing right now i'm like <laughs> yeah. uh i'm not looking at my tesla <laughs> he's like you're an asshole yeah. get to work you know but so, so what's what's next do you have any cool projects coming up next um yeah excellent thank you for asking uh, <laughs> yeah my wait, 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 wait to put that on a t <laughs> yeah. let me just knock that out there um so yeah um the truth is we have a a big project and it's kind of funny i, I don't mind um, having a little behind the scenes here. Obviously, I'm contractually obligated not to say all this blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. right. So there's, anybody watching this knows, read between the lines, but we can't say what it is, but I have a big project I've been doing. I've basically been auditioning for 20 years and I have 800 episodes. So auditioning for uh, a thing um, that uh, I've worked really hard on. I've actually said no to another opportunity um, two years ago, which I thought uh, I got like super depressed after that because I said no because it, it didn't feel right. And they're like, you're crazy. This is like your career. Like, right. why would you say no? And I remember walking in my studio and I was going, I just, I, got my, I started feeling like chest. I'm like, oh my God, this is like, I Having can't believe I just said, because I had my, uh, you know, at this point I have an, an agent and CIA right. blah, 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 and I was on the phone with him and I was like, if I say no to this, is this going to, you know, and he's like, dude, no, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be all right or whatever. And I remember like, okay, cool. Just. Tell him no, it doesn't feel right. And then I hung up the phone and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you just like, puke yeah, everywhere. Yeah, no, like, totally, whatever. 
And I was like, I'll remember this moment forever. So two years later, I took, um, you know, one of the things that I've, I've written and, and done, an, a, another, another group thought it was what I think it is, are now supporting it, and so on and so forth. But because of uh, contractual stuff, I can't say exactly what it is. But pretty soon we'll be uh, filming a bunch of stuff, hopefully in Australia. And I'm obviously wow. looking for, if anybody's watching, uh, that has this sort of opportunity, anything unique, a barn find, uh, and it, something that has a story behind it. And it could be anything, a you know, boat, motorcycle, plane, bicycle, oh, cool. even outside random things like- The toilet you were talking about. The toilet would be great. <laughs> um, it has to be an interesting toilet, but right. um, somebody even came up with a carousel that was like in the back of somebody's yard. Wow, that's um, sick. They wanted to like refurbish it and bring it back. So the idea is the preservation and really feeling like- um, you're bringing something back that once was that's that whole artifact thing I was telling you before that we can make it have another life and it will create all these other stories as opposed to just like throwing it away. And this, I'll go off my, my, my um, soapbox here, but this, I just feel like everybody's buying new things and not right. keeping the things. I always tell my son, we don't want lots of things. You just want one or two things that mean something to you. That is like why you get up in the morning and why you have cool this or that. And you can look at it and be like, wow, like, I look at the 964 and I'm like, you know how much work, first of all, you guys did and I did and we did, like, together, like, in 50 years, like, when you and I are old, you can look at that thing and be like, dude, you remember when we did all that stuff and George did that and your dad was whatever and I remember your dad going, what the hell is this kid doing? Like, yeah. there's all these great yeah. stories to it, right? Yeah, a chapter in the in the story that is whatever the car or the the carousel. Right. And then you give it to the, my son or whatever the case or somebody else. To it. And then it, that now it's their story. They'd be like, oh, the guy who had this had that. And so I think that's the, I think that's the fun part. And we're hoping to sort of capture that in which the most difficult thing to do with these types of things, I'm sure people know what I'm talking about, is to do it in a way that hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. And just like, oh, oh, there's a time limit. We got to get it out at a certain time. It's right. like, oh my gosh. Like, I know people, and I, and I also feel for the people writing those types of things because it's challenging. You have to do this right. all the time and you have to create something that's unique and different. And so I think, I think, I I believe it's going to be amazing. I think if I just stay authentic and keep doing the things that I'm doing, that's what they, that's what they appreciated and what they wanted. I was like, I'm not going to change, you know, something crazy because they, there was a lot of other, I can't get too deep into it. There's all these other interesting ideas that they wanted to do. And I was like, I, that's not me. I can't, pretend to, to find a thing right. that's a whatever and then we have to like damage it and then fix it and it's like well i think that's what people love about you it's the reason why I, I don't mean to make you blush but reason why i fell in love with you mm. is because even when you're off and you're on and like that's no secret right like mm. you got to be a little bit more on on the camera it's it's not fake larry it's larry turned up to 11 right like i, I when you're not on, on camera you're the same guy right and i think it's something that i'm working on because i've always always had this incessant desire for people to like me right so i've always put on a character and the internet since we've been doing content is brutal yeah. Yeah. like don't read that that's the thing that farah said too because you know Matt, matt's a big guy and you know blah 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 he, he doesn't read it anymore doesn't do the comments and i can appreciate that too but in the beginning I, it's I'm hard not, not to yeah I, dude crazy it's hard not to so like if you scroll through like first thing and my piece of advice of doing this for 100 mm -hmm. years is when you get up in the morning that's the last thing you should be doing and i Checking still do it phone. by the way yeah. is check your phone and read the comments because then you're like screwed for the rest of the day luckily most then i say this uh, most of it like how can you what are you, you going to make fun of me because i'm supporting uh uh special olympics like, right what do you, you what is wrong with you like that kind of thing like so i'm i'm in a um uh, a genre where it's like we gonna be angry with yeah, me on you're my a little opinion? Protected to a little extent, bit. Where yeah. Like Matt is a little bit more on the edge because it's like this is his opinion on the Tesla track. Right. I'm like, this guy's a jerk. This guy's right. So he's more controversial. Right. So I can appreciate that. But yeah, for I, me, it's my hair. People are like your hair sucks. Your voice is gay. I'm like, whoa, dude. Like they say your hair is messed up. If your hair is messed up, then what the hell is mine? No, your hair's great, dude. And, and people go with great. my shoes. They talk about my shoes. They just pick the wildest stuff. Right. I'm like, yeah, they know me. So I, I mean, you know what? I, I appreciate the fact that things are not getting to me as much. Right. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you is we want to provide value here on this podcast. Yeah. Let's say you're that kid in Iowa. Um, what's like, do you have any beginner tips? Like someone wants to wash their car like you wash their car. Is there anything that you tell people to focus on or how can somebody start to you know get better as a detailer? 
in a business perspective or just a detailing hobbyist thing? a hobbyist who wants to become a professional i'm no, trying to see if you yeah. want like business advice or you want like how to wash your car no i'm i'm talking about the kid who bought his first honda civic and he takes it to high school oh, okay. and he wants Got to it. shine there is a very basic concept and if you use this concept throughout all the thing interior exterior wheels whatever is anytime you touch your car anywhere could be the leather it could be the paint it could be the window whatever but let's focus on the paint. And when you touch your paint, if you don't have lubrication, okay, lubrication is water, spray wax. It's so name lubrication could be coffee, this tea. I, I'm, I'm really it's lubrication, no, right? Saying. Anything that's not acidic, of course, uh, is going to cause the things that are on your paint will be called contamination. In this case, it's called it dirt. Dirt's on every single car that's outside right now, right? It's just part of life, right? The wind, the blowing. If you wipe that dry, i.e., without lubrication, you are creating what I call love marks so you love your car and i i do this when i'm doing um like uh, detailing talks for like you know porsche club america or whatever like super crazy guys and i say pretend i have a teddy bear right here and i just love this teddy bear and i go like this like this and i squeeze it boom the head pops off right <laughs> you're, you're right. like well that's kind of what people do with their car they just want to white i just want to white i just want i want to touch that right there and you're like <laughs> dude, dude. so i say let me let me post something to you guys let's say i get a brand new car porsche perfectly okay. clean and i don't touch it I don't wipe it. I don't do any. I don't touch it at all. And I, uh, I drive it. and I leave it. And I, you know, it goes in the garage or whatever. No, no crazy. Th nothing fell on it, right? right? And you just let it be. Is that better than wiping it every single day, not lubricated? And you, obviously, I'm setting you up. And they go like, "Well, I mean, it, wouldn't you be maintaining it every day?" I was like, "No, technically, if you left that car, all things considered, in this random example, right? And there's some edges right. here. I would rather take the car that was unmolested or what we call virgin paint." Because you haven't done anything to it. Yeah, you're going to have to clean it. Yes, I'm going to have to polish it. Yes, it might have a little fading or whatever. But it hasn't been shocked by right. this constant. And people think, well, I just wiped it once. I was like, you add that 5,000 times over the time that you... Wrecking the paint. You're wrecking the paint. And that concept for the new people, that's when they go like, oh. So I'm not telling you not necessarily... I'm not telling you to not do it. It's kind of like... Um, and forgive me, and like in high school, they say like, you can't have sex, right? That never worked. It's like, you just give them the condom, right? right? And so that kind of idea with the product, it's like this specifically one, the hydrate, was to add lubrication because people are going to do it anyways. But it's nice to at least have it in your head like, hey, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it with some lubrication and make sure that that paint doesn't get scratched in the process of wiping and why I call it a love mark. It's like, it didn't need to exist. You loved it, right? It didn't, a tree didn't fall on it in a parking lot thing, like the, a freak accident. Right. So if people start to think of their car like, maybe I should just put a lot more lubrication on it. That could be water. You just rinse the car down and then you hydrate it, like you're good to go. But if you're out at a car show or whatever, you use a little bit of spray wax on a spot because a bird pooed on it, that's when you're adding lubrication. So same thing on the interior when you're, when you're lathered. People like... I gotta mm. rub the thing to get the thing. I'm like, dude, you gotta put some a little care bit of into care it, into a little relax. love, a little bit of lubrication in this case. So this is a good product for that. Yeah. So this is like the quintessence hydrate. of all of my products. This particular, yeah, yeah. So that's hydrate. So what happened with hydrate is, and I'm sure we're running close on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this will be the last story. I promise. Um, <laughs> hydrate. I was washing a car at 356 mm -hmm. for this gentleman. You know who I'm talking about. Yep. And. Um, I kept saying, like, this car is literally priceless. It's the sixth th sixth Porsche ever produced. Wow. Like, there's no, you can't put it out. In fact, the car itself has um, hammer marks on it. Anyways, because there was no, like, there was no machine to make it round. There was, like, a dude, like, oh, let's make it. So I'm like, um, okay, this isn't just, like, a job. It's, like, I could be, like, ruining, like, a book. You know, like, somebody right. be like, and then the, uh, that one the detail guy Bible. Like, ruined that guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'll be, like, in the book. So I said, okay, um, I need to wash this properly. And like I said, lot people do 15 different buckets, yep. and five different things. And I have some more tips on that too. But uh, all this stuff to make sure that the paint is lubricated, it's soaked up, you can wipe it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yep. But then when we dry it, you just take that, oh, look at that. Yep. Take that thing right here. And you, you take a little towel and you take that thing. And you're like, oh, you know, I got this thing over here. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got this. <laughs> that. And that's when the scratches occurred. But people thought it was because you were washing it improperly, mm -hmm. which is kind of fascinating. So then I started to do like this little, I wouldn't call it a study, but I just did like, okay, I'll wash this and then I'll, I'll wash it improperly and I'll wash it properly and I'll dry it properly and I'll wash it improperly. And I tried to figure out like, where, where are these scratches coming right. from? I, I have 7,000 buckets. I have the world's greatest soap. And it turned out 90% of it was from drying it improperly. Mm. And so 
I came up with this idea of lubricating the drying process. Wow. So I say like people, when you get up in the morning, you put your pants on, right? And then when you're done with your pants, you put your shirt on, right? Mm -hmm. I said, when you're washing a car, they wash the car, i.e. put the pants on and they walk out with no shirt on, mm. right? You didn't finish the process. And so that, once I came out with that, it just exploded and people were like, oh my God, I didn't even realize. So that is by far, by a mile, our number one seller in 72 countries. Is it easy to use for the beginner? It's super easy. It comes out very viscous. So it's not, um, it comes out thicker. It has a higher viscosity. Right. Um, so it's it's not like spray wax where you, if I were to spray it right here. And it drips shh, down, yeah. And it miss. Like if I were to take that and spray it, it'd go bleep. Yep. It's like a glob. So what it is, is it's pure lubrication with some protection in it. So as you're drying your car, after you wash it, the thing is clean. And then you have soap, uh, you have water remaining. You go in with a microfiber towel that's damp because you can't really dry a car that's a, with a dry right. microfiber towel. It has to be a little bit damp as part of the, the physics of a microfiber towel. Mm -hmm. All right, characteristics. You spray it on the microfiber towel. Gloop, 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 gloop. Right? You rub the microfiber towel and now it's in. Now you have this kind of like luby kind of, not oily is not the right word. but you, if it, Yeah. You, you, you wipe the car and you pick up the, uh, the water. But at the same time, you'll see like, oh, there's a little bit of a streak in there. And then all of a sudden that streak seeps into the pores there. So there was a lot of... Um, a lot chemistry. of work, chemistry, a lot of work um, to make sure that it, it evaporates. Um, the volatility is at a certain rate that, it, you know, it, it evaporates at a certain time um, and you can use it dry and wet. Now in the past, you can only use it wet. Now you can use it dry. So anyways, that I've just answered like a 20 minute thing. No, that that's... Dude. So hopefully that's not over. But the bottom line is lubrication. Think lubrication when you're touching your car and you're good to go. If you can't do it properly, don't do it. And that's the hardest part. Very that hard. makes sense. Yeah. So hopefully that's somewhat helpful. No, that's huge. I think that's huge for people. Yeah. I, I have a million more questions for you, but unfortunately I think we're out of time. All right. But uh, I just want to give you this time now to plug and promote anything that you'd like. Where can people find you? Sure. AmmoNYC.com. Obviously all the products are there. I appreciate all the support. Um, the second one is I created the Ammo Training Academy 300 series. So we did 100 series, which was free. 200 series, which is crazy popular about how to polish. I like the encyclopedia of that also free. The ATA 300 is about how to build a business profitably and basically going through my entire career and talking everything about lawyers and CPAs and how to build contracts, your brand, what you're wearing, what you're saying, what sort of uh, like attitude should you have with a customer? Because it's not always like, yes, sir, no, sir. There's a way of yeah, kind of communicating yourself. in a way yeah. that'd be like, oh my gosh, and why people line up a certain... So there's a lot of um, psychological discussions there and it's 90 episodes oh wow um, so check that out it's the um, ammo training academy.com and then lastly um, I would say this big uh project. what's the word I was supposed to use uh, this big uh, project project or uh -huh. event or whatever um, if anybody has like, oh yeah, you know what? My brother's uncle's cousin's sister has a- <laughs> he Buried a car. Buried a car <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Um, so it's not just barn finds, but anything that has a before and after and a preservation and a feel good story about saving something or helping somebody. Uh, I need to do that on a larger, not just US, global scale. In fact, we're going to Australia to start That's awesome. filming some of those things. So and they can reach them. out online? They can reach out, Larry at AmmoNYC.com, support at AmmoNYC.com or Instagram. Like I'm super- available that's awesome yeah well that was an amazing episode uh, you can find me at who is mikey is uh and at jb bodyworks on instagram if you saw recently we just dropped our first merch line learning from larry about how to brand ourselves a little bit so hop on our uh, our shopify and and support us a little bit uh we can keep making content like this we can yep. keep having great guests and uh thanks man i, I really appreciate that oh, this is great. great i appreciate it all right cool thanks guys tune in next time